subject of the message this morning is prayer from the book of James. Unfortunately, it's the last reading from James, in case you can't tell. I've enjoyed this immensely, and I hope you have too, the teachings that have come. But also from the gospel this morning, as Jesus was pretty clear about the importance of prayer. And maybe it's something we might take advantage of a little bit as far as, oh, I'll get around to it. I don't know about you, but when I get busier in the world, the one thing that seems to get a little less of is prayer. And the one thing that Martin Luther taught us, on the busiest days when you have the most going on, he suggested taking two hours in prayer in the morning. And I'm thinking, two hours? You have to be kidding me. I'm trying to find two minutes before I get out the door and start doing this and this and this and this. This past week we had a marvelous conference with the pastors and leaders of Northern Illinois in Cincinnati by northwest of Galena. And our former bishop, Mark Hansen, was there, our presiding bishop. And what a wonderful mind he has. And he challenged us to think about ministry. And I would challenge you to think about life in terms of, is it really a group, a task, a group of tasks that need to be accomplished? or relationships to be nourished at the core of life. Oh, wow. Wow, seems like those tasks never quite get done. We keep working and working and working. But to sit down and chat with one another and build relationships and pray for one another, there is where we're getting to the gold of life. The gold of life. I would like to point out this morning in, this, in the um, reading from James that many of the elements of worship are present in the reading. We come together to cleanse our hearts, to pray for one another, to say probably a couple things we did this week, maybe we wish we hadn't. Or maybe there was something we could have done but didn't quite get to it. That's certainly one of the things we do in confession. And we pray for one another, right? It's one of the basic tenets of which I'm preaching this morning. Uh, life happens and there are all kinds of things from the sadness like we heard about from Reuben this morning. I enjoyed my relationship with Reuben very much. On the one hand, Reuben is rejoicing. His body is no longer holding him back. On the other hand, I won't get to see him for a while until it is with our Savior above. And so there is a family this morning who's grieving and who needs our prayers. Are any of you cheerful? Somebody had a blessing last week. Somebody got a new job, had a, a, something good happen to them, and came in with a light heart and came in with joy and with light steps because of how life unfolded. Wouldn't we give thanks to God for that? Anybody who's sick on the hospital list, wouldn't we pray for them? The list goes on. So how are we here today involved with prayer? And that's something I want to challenge you with a little bit because prayers are needed for death, divorce, for the sickness, for the hospital, for decline in health, and all of those things happen every week. For jobs lost and jobs gained, for births, the wonderful miracle that that is, for weddings and for healing. I don't know about you, but I'm better at praying when I need healing than after it happens. I kind of think, well, I got this now, God, go ahead, you know, right? Anybody ever think that? <laughs> there were three preachers one time on that very topic talking about what's the best angle, the best approach to prayer. And one of them said, well, it's kneeling right down here. Kneeling is the best way to pray. And another preacher said, the ancient form of hands uplifted so that the spirit would come down through the arms into the body, that's the best way to pray. And a third preacher said, flat out, face down, prostrate before the Lord. There's no further you can go. You're dependent fully on God for life. While the three were talking, there was a telephone repairman over here listening in. And he said, well, you guys all have it wrong. He said, the way I prayed the best in my life was that time when I was hanging upside down from a telephone pole <laughs> praying for my life. My prayers were right there, <laughs> right? When you're in need, your prayers are right there. <laughs> Remembering to give God thanks and praising God when things turn around. If you're like me, they don't always happen when and how and in the ways that I would like my prayers to be answered. And yet God says, in my time, I'm watching you. I've called you by name. And as you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you walk through the fires, you shall not be burned. For I am the Lord your God, whose wisdom is greater than all upon the face of the earth. And so in this morning, I was thinking about prayer at St. John's and how it happens around here. 
Sometimes it seems quiet here during the week, especially in the summer. That's why I love rally day and when everything kicks up again in the fall and there's lots of things going on. Let's try to remember and consider the ways that we pray for one another here. And so I want to go there with you this morning. And I want to grab a pencil, which I forgot to do, and there's one right here. Because I made a long list, and I want you to help me remember from your lips the ways we pray for one another. And this list got a little longer than I thought it would. So I need to have you involved with me this morning to share. Nobody here will laugh at us. Nobody will bite us. It's just us together. What are the ways that you've prayed for one another this week? Help me out. <coughs> Anybody pray this week? Oh boy. I hope somebody did. <laughs> Denise, please get us started. <laughs> yeah, Denise, come. Excuse me? Laying in bed praying. Okay, who are you praying for? Somebody that, somebody's had needs with somebody? Family. Family? You bet. Okay. Denise, you had one? Wow. You know, we think about praying for others, but it's not, it's not a bad thing to ask others to pray for us. Amen. Amen. And what a joy it was to see, first of all, a mainline denomination addressing Congress who needs it sorely because they don't go by God's wisdom, right? <laughs> and secondly, that the news and the press actually gave positive uh, news about a mainline denomination. I was in awe. I was kind of stunned because usually when they talk about mainline denominations, it's not so positive. There is power. Pope asking for prayer, realizing a man of great wisdom such as himself that he needs the prayers of all. Sandy, you had one. <laughs> When you drive. Wow, that is wonderful to hear when you're driving. Especially with some of the drivers today, they're a little distracted. <laughs> we need to be praying. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, please, Barbara. Uh, when I went by a church this uh, week, I noticed the cars and realized it was a funeral. I prayed for the uh, family. It's amazing because fairly frequently I find myself in the funeral line. Barbara had mentioned when she saw a funeral procession that she prayed for the family. I ride in that procession, as you might guess, rather regularly, and it's amazing to see the oncoming traffic. Some people immediately pull over and out of respect allow the caravan to go by. And yet there are others who just whiz by, totally oblivious to the fact that there is profound grief right next door to them in the next car over. What a difference but a respectful thing to do. And uh, a lot of times people come from far away and come back home to Sterling for a funeral and they comment about that. Wow, people still do that? So, yeah, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat when we're praying for one another. Doris, you have one. Wow, when you hear that. Thank you, Doris. Doris said she prays when she hears that do, 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 do from the helicopter. You can't miss it when it comes in and out of town. A lot of lives are upended really abruptly in those moments, including medical people and those who care for, let alone the one who was ill and the family. Absolutely, thank you. You bet. How about some other ways? Please, Denise. I'm sorry. Natural disasters which seem to happen regularly. Thank you. Yeah, for those around the world. You bet. Prayer is mentioned seven times in the reading today. Please, Linda. Okay. And the Spirit does that because you're a woman of insight with, uh, with spiritual matters. And so when, when that all of a sudden, for some unknown reason, somebody's name comes to you, you're praying for them. Yeah. Did you, that ever happened to anybody? It happens all the time. You think of somebody you hadn't heard of for a while. Have you ever received a little card or a prayer or a note from somebody out of the blue? The timing was just like... How do they know? How do they know? This is the spirit at work in our lives. Janet, please. Yeah, there's a reason for this 
prayer tree over here. Janet's talking about, Janet is a retired teacher, and she's talking about the difference from when she taught to today. Some of the things are similar, but, but it seems to be a more challenging world than it was maybe 20 or 30 years ago. And hence the need for teachers to be prayed for and the students as well, just as we were doing here. Very much necessary and needed and helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, anybody else in the hinterland way back there? <laughs> Anyways, please, Leland. Praying for our church every night. Thank you. Oh, servicemen, I'm sorry. Okay. Who are deployed around the world. Yeah. Yeah, you know what that means, don't you, Lee? To be overseas and far away from home and injured and wondering if you're going to live another day. You know what that's like. Yeah, thank you for those prayers for our servicemen and women. Anybody else? Please, Carinza. Oh. Thank you. Just like we sang in How Great Thou Art, feel the gentle breeze and the brooks and the sunshine and the blue sky. Carinza said she likes to pray when she's out for a walk or a jog, thanking God for creation. That's our home. That's what supports us, all of air and water and soil. Without that, we have no hope important to take care of that and to thank God for it. I have a few other things on our list and the ways that I've noticed you pray for each other. You call each other sometimes or you text each other or send cards. I cannot imagine how many cards you've sent, Vera, in your lifetime. I've watched you sign many of them. Send them to somebody who's lost a loved one, who is sick, who's had surgery, who's having a hard time. There are others who do that with Vera. Um, there are Sunday and Wednesday prayers at worship. You look out for each other as friends, checking in, checking in on each other. I heard X, Y, Z happened in your life. Just wanted to give you a call. Of course, there's, there are hospital prayers. And of course, your pastors go there regularly. But also, you folks visit one another. And I know Karen is upstairs with their bell choir, and she's one of our Barnabas members. And Betty, you've done that for a number of years. And Don is up there at the front desk serving others. Is there a hand up back there? Yeah, please, Jan. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of goofy stuff on Facebook and there's a lot of really neat stuff on Facebook. And we have our St. John's prayer champion, which is Teresa. And if you haven't seen her postings, I don't know where she comes up with some of these verses and prayers. They are just magnificent in a way that is spread freely just from a couple clicks. You know, we like to hammer on Facebook for the things that aren't so good, but there are a lot of things that are good, and that's one of them. Sure. Like that ripple. Like God can work through that technology too. Absolutely. We have a caregivers, caregivers group that meets here every month to take care of each other. We have a 12-step group that meets here, calls upon a higher power to whip addictions. If you've ever been addicted or know somebody who is, you know the power of evil that that can have over people. We have a grief group who meets here of parents who have lost kids. A horrid thing. We do five nursing home worships a month for those who always tell me the one thing they miss most is going to church. They miss their homes, but they miss going to church worse. To be there to pray with them. Uh, to have, we have our parish nurses, Nancy and Vera, who give, do our blood pressure and CPR and take care of us physically. We have our AED outside the door there. Articles on health and healing, advice on how to care for ourselves, which is a form of prayer. Lots of times there's counsel going on, formally with myself or with others, one to another, sharing problems. We have prayers at weddings. We have prayers of forgiveness at the beginning of each worship, as I had mentioned, because there are times we need that. We have um, prayers for music, prayers for the homeless, prayers for teachers, world leaders, refugees, military, police. The prayer list goes on and on and on. It is one of God's great commands, and again with this gospel this morning, to cut off your arm or cut off your leg or pluck out your eye. Of course, we do not understand scripture literally, 
but understand no less how important this is as people of God. When Jesus uses language like that, he means to do it. It's in the scripture, as I had said seven times today. It's the engine of the church. It's the power that moves along. It doesn't make sense from a worldly sense, from a worldly point of view. It makes all the sense that there is when we consider Christ and the cross. Because Christ and the cross doesn't make sense to the world. But the world is changed, turned upside down by that reality of our faith life. So I invite you to do that, to strengthen your prayer life in this time and in this place. Commit to one another. And perhaps next Sunday, share with someone how you maybe have prayed in a new way or a different way. We're never too old to do something a little different, to add, to grow in our faith. God gives us the length of years to share our wisdom, and it's meant to be a blessing for others. I pray that you would engage your prayer life. Find some new ways of, of which you've heard this morning if you haven't engaged them. Try it out. See what happens. I dare you. I think you would be well pleased. I know that God certainly will. I thank God for you, and I think of the psalm this morning as I close my message. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my God, my rock, my strength, my redeemer. Amen.